Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to install the GitHub Enterprise Server on VMware and we're going to have it connected to LDAP for uh, credential management. I also have a private CA within my lab so I've generated certificates and, and all the uh, prereq DNS necessary for uh, GitHub so we'll be able to load those certs uh, accordingly. Uh, we'll go through all that together as we do the install. Um, so let's get started. Uh, first thing you want to do is go to enterprise.github.com slash trial and you'll be presented with this 45 day free trial uh, subscription. Fill out your information. You can select deploy GitHub on your own servers. When you submit it, they'll send you a link to uh, the download page uh, where you can download your, uh, your uh, hypervisor version uh, or you can also install it in the cloud. Um, now for 3.4, the current version uh, it looks like it only supports Hyper-V, OpenStack, and uh, VMware. Previous releases also uh, supported Zen, uh, but we're going to do uh, VMware. So we can select that, download it, upload it to our vCenter. I've already taken care of that. In addition to the download link, they'll also include your license file. So you'll get that. Make sure you download that and have it ready for the install. Uh, some uh, things you need to consider is the uh, resource requirements. So if we select uh, install in the docs and go to install on VMware, uh, please notice that it took, takes a minimum of uh, four vCPUs and 32 gig of memory. Uh, as part of the install package, it also provides a 200 gig uh, root, uh, root, uh, root volume. Uh, you'll see that too when we go to make some edits. It, it will require another volume that's attached to it. Uh, so you'll, you'll need to manually add that as well. So just keep that in mind. Now, if you're gonna be running any advanced services like Actions, uh, then the resources uh, double right so the minimum uh, requirements for uh, you know light user and obviously for my lab would be something like this but you're going to be running actions we've got four you know we've got eight vcpus rather and 64 gig of memory would be the minimum required uh, i have done the install with uh, lower resources and it was successful but it takes a long time and you can really see that the memory consumption is, is pretty high so uh, these requirements are, are pretty uh, locked in stone if you want something that's going to be a snappy uh, process. Um, these uh, requirements uh, moving into actions uh, are no joke, so uh, make sure you provide the right amount of resources for your, even for a lab environment. Um, for our uh, initial install here, we're just going to do uh, four vCPUs and 32 gig of memory, and then we'll uh, get all this configured. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get started. I've already uploaded the uh, uh, OVA to my vCenter. So let's go ahead and make those edits. And we're going to do four vCPUs and what did I say, 32 gig of memory. And again, it comes with that root partition. And the root partition is automatically set up. I've got this on vSAN, so it's going to take my vSAN policy. Uh, but <clears throat> by default, it's, it's going to want uh, lazy zero. Let's add our new disk here. So we'll add our second disk. And that uh, minimum requirement was 150 gig. I'm also going to put this on vSAN, so we'll set that with our uh, with our storage. Just going to double check that. Yep. All right. And okay, so that's it. Now we can go ahead and boot this up. And when it installs, uh, you need to set up the networking. Uh, we'll do that, and then you'll access the uh, uh, a web interface to complete the installation. All right. So this will take just a few seconds. Okay, you'll see here it says press S to start. And what I typically do is I wait for the scrolling to stop. Uh, then I'll press, press S uh, to set up the networking. All right, that looks good. Okay, and then static. And subdomain. primary DNS. Okay, that looks good. Done and save. And this should tell us to uh, go to the IP address for install. Yep. So you see right here, it says go to the IP address slash setup to configure. So we can change that. Uh, 172. All right, and then there are self-signed certs that are already uh, pre-installed, so we will get these errors. These are common. 
and we can jump right to it. Here's where we'll load our license file on our desktop and add our admin password. And finish our install. Then it should, we should be presented with three options. Yep, new install, migrate, or configure a replica. This is going to be a new install. And here we'll put in our uh, DNS, and mine is git.redcloud.land. <clears throat> and uh, what you, again, what you need is a, a wildcard in DNS. So I have a wildcard registered as asterisk.git.redcloud.land uh, that's in here as well. Uh, and uh, also have this, and I have the IP address all in the cert. Um, they do recommend uh, subdomain isolation. Uh, you can do a test real quick. So we select this, and it just shows that the wildcard's been installed. Um, the A record for uh, Git is there. I'm not running an internal mail server right now. This will change as I continue to evolve the lab, but uh, I'm not doing a, a mail relay. Uh, now, when you select uh, subdomain isolation, um, which provides a little bit more security because it's going to just generate uh, those uh, subdomains for you, when you select that, uh, you test, and here's all the subdomains that are going to be created as part of your uh, install and uh, they'll all be referenced underneath uh, asterisk.get so it is a recommended uh, option there um, and i'm not going to configure github actions or packages at this point we're just going to do our uh, install so let's go ahead and save that okay now i'm going to have to upload some certificates but the first thing i need to do is load uh, my ssh key so i can ssh into the box uh, so I can copy some uh, certs up. So let me grab my uh, terminal window here. It's, uh, sorry about that, it's off screen. And we will cat grab our pub key, put that in there. Okay, now that that's registered, uh, we should be able to uh, transfer our certs in there. So let's go to CA, and that's where my certs are, and we'll SCP. Uh, it's a capital P for SCP. It's a lowercase p for SSH. And notice the port has changed. Uh, the standard port for SSH is 22. Uh, we're going to be accessing it on 122, so we'll change that port to 122. And I have an LDAP CA cert that I'm going to copy up, and it is admin at... Uh, git.redcloud.land and we'll just put it in temp for now. All right, and then my CA cert. Okay, and then we can SSH into our uh, uh, enterprise server. Again, a lowercase p here. Okay, this is a Debian installation, so go to user, local, share, uh, CA certificates. All right, and we've got our certs in temp, so we'll just move those here. Move temp star dot cert. To here. There we go. So we got our two certificates, and then uh, to install them, it's just update CA certificates, and we should get two loaded right there. Two added. Okay, so that's all we need to do at this point. All right. Okay, moving on our install. <clears throat> uh, host name has been registered. Uh, you can change your NTP servers. I'm just going to leave these as default. Uh, and then here's where we'll set up our uh, LDAP uh, configuration. And this is, for me, sorry, uh, ldap.redcloud.land. Uh, port is 36, and it is ldapS. My domain search user, just a second, I have that off screen. My read-only account there, and its password.
admin groups. Uh, I've configured git admins. And the base domain is dc equals red cloud, dc equals land. And uh, make sure you hit add. Anytime, anytime there's an add, you have to load that in. Uh, restricted user group is uh, git users, add, and then uh, uid and cn. Obviously, if you're syncing up uh, email, SSH keys, etc., you'll put all that in. Uh, I'm not uh, doing that at this point, so we can skip all this and go down to privacy. Uh, this is where we'll load in our certificates. Uh, it does support Let's Encrypt. Uh, that's not part of this demo. Maybe I'll do that later. Uh, let's go ahead and load in our certificate. It's a PEM file. Uh, so uh, the PEM file. The PEM file is essentially the CA and the CERT uh, amended together. And then we have our key. Let's grab our key. There we go. So that's loaded. Um, not doing any of that. Uh, pages are fine. I'm not doing email at this point. Uh, no monitoring. And then, of course, I'm not configuring actions or packages. However, I do want to make sure that uh, my dependency graph, uh, code scanning, a dependent bot requires action, so we're not doing that. Uh, and secret scanning is included. And I think that's it. So let's do save settings. All right, so it's configuring the instance. <clears throat> there we go. And this will just take a few moments to get installed, and then we'll be uh, uh, presented with our uh, visit your instance, and then that'll log us into our uh, platform. Um, so we'll wait for this to uh, to complete. I'll show you that, and then uh, we'll be ready to go. Okay, once the uh, installation is complete, you'll see this uh, go green, visit your instance. And if our certs are loaded correctly, DNS is all loaded correctly, this should uh, reset our, uh, our URL here to the domain and uh, our approved certificate. And then we can create our orgs and such. So let's take a look. So we can see it's logged in. And tells us that uh, we can sign in uh, with LDAP because we had that configured as part of the installation. And let's just do uh, uh, say git admin, and let me grab the password and paste that in here. And there we go. So we're uh, all logged in. We can make uh, administrative changes by hitting the rocket here. This takes us to our site in admin, and we can complete our configuration, uh, build our organization, invite users, etc. And uh, that looks looks like a good start. All right, so that's it for this video. All we did was a quick install. Uh, I hope to do a further uh, series of videos as we go into administrating uh, GitHub Enterprise Server. Until then, thanks a lot for watching.